Welcome to lecture 13. Let us start looking at properties of group. Point groups are little in more details. So let us start with summary of group definition. So we said when symmetry elements are uh, group elements, which is symmetry operations which are related by four properties then these are defined as point groups right so the first property in that is closure property which defines that if g is a group consists of various elements then a b equals x any group element such that x must belong to g similarly if a square is equal to y such that y should also belong to g right so that is a closure property next property is identity element so group must have an element e which must commute with all other elements and leave them unchanged upon combination okay so i'm just briefing you those properties again closure identity third is group elements must follow associative law associative law of combination which is a b c is equal to a b c right so this is self-explanatory we'll look at certain examples to explain all of this again then fourth is inverse that is every element must have an inverse which must belong to group right so these are the uh, four properties which group elements must follow so that they can be called as a point group right so let us take a few examples. Uh, let's start our examples from simple mathematics that we know already. Uh, and then we will go to symmetry operations. So let's see. This will help us understand this group properties uh, much more. So consider a set. So let's say call it example one. Consider a set of integers including zero so that means i is a set such that you have dash 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 minus three minus two minus one zero one two three so this is a complete set now let's see if uh, all the members of this group follow the four properties are not okay so the closure property and in this case for closure property we will say that combination is equal to addition okay so we will not be considering product as a combination we will consider addition as a combination so closure property so sum of uh, which tells you that 
sum of any two integers is an integer and this will belong to group i right so you can take any integer from this and if you take a sum or combination the result will belong to i so the first property is valid second property is identity so does it have an element which combines with other elements to leave them unchanged and is also commutes with those so that element is zero so for example zero plus one is equal to one plus zero is equal to one so it leaves them unchanged and then it's also uh, commuting with all those elements right so identity also applies now next try associativity so again this is all in uh, when combination is equal to addition okay so for associativity if we say that minus 3 plus minus 2 minus 1 this must be equal to minus 3 minus 2 plus minus 1 right so this holds we all know that it will hold so associativity also applies and inverse so inverse is every integer has an inverse so for example 2 is inverse of minus 2 remember it's a addition as a combination so 2 will be inverse of minus 2 3 is inverse of minus 3 right so they are all part of group so inverse also applies so that means i forms a mathematical group under addition okay now let's say example 2 let's say if we consider the same group but now we say that the combination is product or multiplication okay so in this case let's see the closure property does it hold true so minus 2 into minus 3 is equal to 6 so product of any two integers is a third integer so closure property does hold true then identity so one is an element which leaves any other element unchanged and also commutes with them right so identity also holds now associativity does it hold let's see so associativity means 2 into 3 into 4 we like this is equal to 2 into 3 into 4 so that should also work associativity holds now let us look at inverse so inverse of 2 is inverse of 2 is 1 by 2 okay in the previous case it was uh, minus 2 in this case it is 1 by 2 because we have changed the definition of combination right so inverse of 2 is 1 by 2 which is not part of i right so inverse does not hold so that means i does not form a mathematical group under combination so that's example two okay let's uh, look at more examples let's say we all know cube roots of unity that is if you take cube root of one we get three solutions right one mega omega square how do we get this let's say if z cube is equal to one this is just a refresher and to solve for z you can factorize it as z minus 1 into z square plus z plus 1 equal to 0 right so you can do this factorization and this gives you 
first root as z equal to 1 which is an obvious answer and the other two roots are we can say z1 z2 will be equal to minus half this is the quadratic equation so you can solve it plus i root 3 by 2 and this is imaginary so z3 is minus half minus i root 3 by 2 okay so now it also so you can call this as 1 and this as omega and this as omega square okay so that's why i write uh, 1 omega omega square so as it turns out if you look at this if you square this and expand this you will get if you square z2 you'll get z3 or if you square z3 you'll get z2 so if you call one of them as omega the other one becomes omega square it doesn't matter which one you call omega which one you call omega square both are related by square relation you can test it yourselves so this is the 10th class mathematics which i'm not going to discuss so let's uh, go further so now let's say that the this particular group which is defined as cube root of unity does it follow the four properties so let's test the closure property and in this case the combination in the closure definition we will consider as product okay so now let's see for closure product of every element must be an element from the group right so 1 into omega is equal to omega omega into omega square is equal to omega cube which is equal to 1 so this is part of group this is part of group and the third product is 1 into omega square which is omega square this is also part of group so closure property holds right then the second property is identity so for identity we know that one is an element which when multiplies with omega leaves omega unchanged and also commutes with omega right so identity also holds similarly and so associativity will hold right that is not to be shown now you can show it and also inverse okay so we can say that omega into omega square is equal to 1 so that means omega is equal to 1 by omega square so this implies that omega inverse is equal to omega square right so omega square omega inverse has om is omega square and omega square belongs to group g similarly we can show for rest of the members so if you take one into omega square then you will see this will hold so inverse also holds so that means the cube root of unity form a set which forms a mathematical group okay so you can take some home assignments here so one is a set of real numbers under multiplication okay then you can also look at cube roots of minus 1 okay so we have done it for plus 1 you can do it for minus 1 okay and i think these two examples will be sufficient for you to understand that uh, how the four laws are four properties are used to define a particular set whether that particular set will be called as a group or not okay so now let's also look at certain properties uh, recall some other properties so we have also discussed product of symmetry operations remember that uh, we have done 
if we say x into y equals to z, we say that this operation is applied first and this operation is applied second and this is the resultant. We had seen that before. Right? So, or in other ways, if I say that if I start from a molecule I and I apply Y, I get let's say E1, then I apply X, I get E2, which are equivalent configurations. And this can be achieved by Z, right? This is what it means by product of symmetry operations. So that should also be very clear. Now let us uh, look at a important property of uh, product. So as it turns out, reciprocal of product of two or more elements is equal to product of reciprocals in reverse order. So what do I mean by that? So mathematically you can write it as A, B, C, D, E and so on. Reciprocal of so reciprocal of product of two or more elements which is written over here is equal to product of reciprocal in reverse order that means E inverse D inverse C inverse B inverse inverse right so if i say this so product of reciprocals in reverse order will be equal to this right now how do i prove this so let's try to prove this so if we say let's consider three elements for now if a b c are three elements of group G then we can write A B C is equal to D right so now multiplying multiplying by C inverse B inverse A inverse on both sides what do we get let's see a b c c inverse b inverse a inverse gives you d c inverse b inverse a inverse right now this c c inverse will become e right so i can take this out because e commutes with everything so i can write it as a b b inverse a inverse and e i don't need to write this is equal to d c inverse b inverse a inverse similarly i can write this as e again i can write a a inverse as e so this is nothing but e is equal to d c inverse b inverse a inverse right now I can take D that side or what I can do is multiply with D inverse on both sides. So what do I get? D inverse E is equal to D inverse D, C inverse, B inverse, 
hangers now i can skip this thing e so i can just write d inverse d inverse d will also be equal to e so that also is not to be written c inverse d inverse inverse so e is like mathematical one so which is not required if you are writing in multiplication right so and uh, we started with assumption that uh, a b c is equal to d product of these three elements is equal to d so we can now replace this as a b c inverse equals to c inverse b inverse a inverse right so that's very easy to see so this is one important property that we'll be using every now and then in various things so that's why uh, i thought it is better to show it so now let us uh, go to something called as group multiplication table so why do we need to uh, look at a group multiplication table so basically what it means is it's also short formed as abbreviated as gmt so basically it consists of product of all possible symmetry operations in a given molecule so how do you uh, write it so for example let's say if you have a g4 so g4 means that a group of order 4 which is consisting of e a b c okay so let's also define order at this point order of the group it is denoted by letter small letter h is equal to number of non redundant symmetry operations okay in a particular group that will be called as order of the group so now let's see what is a group multiplication table for g4 so when i say group multiplication table i draw it as a table i write g4 here and then i write e a b c and then in column also i write e a b c okay now e into e will be equal to e now in this case i multiply this as i write this as first or this one will be operated first and this one will be operated second okay so then that means it will be written as a e because this is my first operand and this is my second operator okay similarly here it will be written as b e c e and here it will be written as e a e b and e c now let's also write down this will be a a this will be b a c a we will see how to solve this then this will be a b and a c this will be b b b c c b and c c so also one important thing since no two group elements are same no two products are same and products 
must belong to group that we know from closure property right so all these products must belong to either of this eabc but none of this product should be repeated so for example in any particular row or any particular column all the products should be unique right because all the group elements are different so their products should also be different so their product should also be unique so this leads to something called as rearrangement theorem So what is rearrangement theorem? It says in a group multiplication table, each row and column lists each element. in the group once and only once this means it follows that no two rows or columns are same okay so both these rows and columns all these rows and columns must be different so let's now try to see how to populate these uh, group multiplication tables so let's start with the simple case of g2 so g2 will be order 2 that means on the two elements one has to be identity and second can be any element so e a now if I multiply E to E, it will always be E. If I multiply E to A, it will be again A, right? Similarly, A to E will be A. A to A will be, now it has to be E, right? Because it cannot go out of these two elements. The product has to be closed product or uh, it has to follow the closure property and it also complies with rearrangement theorem so the, because this row reads as this column reads as ea whereas this column reads as ae right so this is not same as this and similarly this row is not same as this row okay so now let's also try g3 so e a b e a b now first row will be because it is multiplied by e so it will be same as eab and similarly this column will be eab now we have to write here what is the product of aa and this will be ba this will be ab and this will be bb okay so now let's see if let us suppose if a a is equal to e so if we replace this as e then b a this product has to be the only option is that if a a becomes e then a a is already taken e is here then the only option that can come here is b right but now B cannot come here because B is already present in this column, right? So two columns cannot have same elements or two rows cannot have same elements at the same column place, right? So if I put this as E, this has to be B and you cannot have two Bs in the same. It's like a Sudoku puzzle, right? Where you cannot repeat any digit when you are playing Sudoku. So very similar to that. Okay, so that means this condition is not valid. So this leaves us as you have to keep AA as B because AA now cannot be A because we already have A here. So AA has to be B. So if AA is B, this implies that BA has to be 
E, right? So then you can replace, you can write here B, A is equal to B, B, A is equal to E, and that leaves A, B, this becomes your E, and this becomes your A, right? So now you notice very interesting thing over here that a a is equal to b and b a is equal to e and b a is nothing but a a so this becomes triple a is equal to e so if you see that a is equal to a so now if you correlate a to the power 1 is equal to a a to the power 2 is equal to b a to the power cube is equal to e right so this type of group where every element can be obtained by a single element and its powers is called a cyclic group okay also it is important to see you you can verify this yourself groups of prime orders where h is equal to 2 3 5 and so on are cyclic and abelian abelian we have learned earlier cyclic we have learned today so groups of prime orders are cyclic and abelian for all such groups okay so now let us uh, i think it's time to wrap up this part group multiplication table but before going let us uh, take some home assignment Populate GMT of G4, G5, and G6. And see, for example, in case of uh, G3, we have seen, or G2, we have seen that there is only one way of filling this group multiplication table. Let's see also find out how many possible ways are there to populate above GMTs okay uh, that's first and also do write GMT of NH3. Okay, let's you try to find out what is the point group, what are the symmetry operations. So what you have to do is list down all the symmetry operations here, list down all the symmetry operations here and then find out the all the products of the symmetry operations to populate the GMT. So this will be. So I'm not going to tell you what is the order, what are the symmetry operations. So you try to exercise it. The certain products will be easier to fill, while certain products you will have to actually carry out all the operations and do it. So this will be easier once you have the GMT of NS3 ready with you. This will be easier to 
further go look at the properties of subgroups and classes and also when we take an history example will be easier so try to do it yourself if you have any difficulty we can always discuss in the interaction class okay i think that's all for today thank you